Patricia, you may return to me, my lover. How I welcome you, I beckon. I know you've had another. We can be each other's second. Come sit and give me cover. To you I give my blessing. And about you I will hover. I pray we've learned our lesson. How much you are the younger and vibrant are your methods. I know one day again you'll wonder. But tonight, let us be breathless. We will feed each other's hunger, then apply the proper dressings. And at our bed we'll hide under this year of our transgressions. Patricia. Fictitious person. Sort of. I use some of the letters in Patricia. To represent to represent the triangle that she had constructed. I represented one of the corners of the triangle. Does that sound like a wholesome relationship to you? Because it doesn't to me. No. I'm pretty sure that's not a wholesome relationship. If you, do you have that reoccurring dream? Everybody, everybody, listen to me. A lot of people talk about, you know, they have that dream. I had one that I would get when I was sick as a child. And it was, pain, weird. It was almost more of a, a thought a conscious thought as I'm dreaming. I won't describe it. it is, it's nonsensical. It just, it's nonsensical. I can find no way to incorporate it into my, into my machine here. It has no value. The dream itself. But the one where I followed Patricia around from room to room in that house in New Orleans... That was a dream. And every time I would get into a room, she would have just left it. It seems. And I would have to follow her around the house. This house in New Orleans. This old <laughs> period home. With its accessories. It's atmosphere. Yes. If you're getting dreams like that about somebody in your life, you better take them dreams to somebody pretty quick and talk about it. Because that is your subconscious telling you you're fucked. You are fucked if you stay in this relationship. You've heard me talk about keep your head on a swivel. Good and evil. Always trying to, well, you know what? You've got that thing called intuition as well. You've got that gut feeling as well. Which may be getting, being generated from within completely. Maybe you're being helped. If you're a Christian, you profess and believe in God, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, maybe you're being helped. But when you get dreams like that, your brain's trying to talk to you. It's trying to show you something that you won't look at. Your subconscious is. Because it's very truthful. In a way, it's very truthful. It, has no, it doesn't understand truth and lies. It just, it, it is. The subconscious has no concept, I do not believe, of good and evil. The subconscious isn't aware without the conscious. Yes.
my opinion. So the subconscious holds facts, feelings, theories, beliefs, suggestions, and it throws it up to the conscious brain while you're sleeping. You go, look at this, smell this. You should take a moment and smell it, whatever that dream is. Because it may have merit in your life. What dreams may come? Jesus Cristo. Jesus Cristo. I still hear him on the bus. Jesus Cristo. We were supposed to go to Bethlehem that day. That's right. We were supposed to go to Bethlehem. But no. An Arab boy wanted a pack of cigarettes. And a Jewish soldier shot him. That's how I understand the story. And it ruined our sightseeing tour. Because some Egyptian boy or some Arab boy wanted to, apparently wanted a pack of cigarettes and he pitched a wall or something. And then a, 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 a Jewish, a, a Hebrew soldier, whatever, had to shoot him or whatever. And his really, this, this is what came to us on the tour of us. Uh, si siphoned and censored, whatever, information. But all I know is it blew my trip to Bethlehem. Okay, so I've never been to Bethlehem. Thank you, Arab boy, for wanting cigarettes and getting your head blown off. You really ruined my vacation. I talked, but I was so sick. Hey, those Egyptians, those little sneakers, they slipped in some local water on me. Oh! Man, I didn't move far from the hotel room in uh, Jerusalem. El Gazira. El Gazira, that's Cairo. The Sheraton in Jerusalem. Man, I didn't move far from that bathroom. And somebody had brought up a basket of green fruit. I could have kissed them. <sighs> I never craved unripened pears so much in my life. <laughs> like two days later, I was mad. I was able to get down to the restaurant. Dairy meat. I'm in. I'm in Jewish land. Okay, dairy meat. I'm like, uh, I gotta sit on this side for dinner and that side for. Okay, okay. Man, that was a bottle of milkshake. I had two of them back to back. I was so dehydrated. I ordered one. I was able to hold it down. I ordered another. One. I was like, oh yes. The traveling sickness. <laughs> Jesus Christo.